Hey, what's up everybody? It's Jamie. Today we're going to be looking at the Angular Material menu. Alright, and we're going to be going through the docs and seeing all the things it can do, and we're going to be doing it all in our own blank site. Alright, first things first, if you haven't seen my video on the Angular Material Basics, be sure to check that out so you know what's going on. Other than that, we're just going to be getting started with this first example here, the most basic map menu that's on their site. So I'm going to go in my own site and make sure I import the mat menu module uh, into the app module. Okay, and their example also uses a, uses a button, so I need to make sure to include the mat button module. Okay, so we have both of those from Angular Material. Uh, also make sure you have the browser animations module imported so that any animations within the mat menu also work. And then I'm going to paste that code we copied uh, into my own blank HTML file. Alright, so what is this code actually doing? Basically we have a button that triggers a menu. Alright, and then this menu element is given a variable name called menu. Alright, we don't need the second part, that's just more complicated than it needs to be. Basically our mat menu just is now assigned to the variable menu. This menu variable is accessible anywhere inside this HTML file. And then the button says, um, I want to act as a menu trigger for the menu named menu, which is this one. So the end result is when you click the button, it opens the menu, and the menu has two buttons inside of it. All right, that's all we need to get our first example working. Okay, so we loaded the page and we click the menu button and it shows the map menu. It's that easy. And then the map menu just has some more buttons inside it. Another interesting thing we can do is use icons within the map menu to make it look a little nicer. And to do that, uh, we just need to include map icon inside of each map menu item. Okay, so I'm gonna go and add those icons to our example here. Uh, and then format it so it looks nice. So within each button we have mat icon as well as a span. And then that mat icon just has the name of whatever icon uh, we want. These icons are defined at material.io slash tools slash icons. So there's a big list here and you can just choose any of these names. The next thing we need to do to make it work is we need to go in the module file and import mat icon module as well as in our index.html, we need to uh, import this link uh, for the Google fonts for Angular Material, right? And that's just fonts.googleapis.com slash icon, uh, and then the family is material icons, okay? So import that, and with those changes we should be good. Um, so there are icons, so that looks pretty nice, and then this middle button is disabled because uh, in the HTML we marked the button as disabled. Alright, another thing we can do is customize the menu position, um, because by default the menu, it goes down and then to the right. Alright, but we can change that by using uh, X position and Y position. So if we do Y position above, then the menu will go above the button, so it would go up here. But we wouldn't be able to see that because it's already at the top of the page. <clears throat> so to fix that, uh, what I'm going to do is inside of the uh, styles.css, I'm just going to add some body margin so that um, the button is in more the middle of the page. And then I can go ahead and apply uh, that Y position equals above, and then we should be able to see those changes. So if I click here now, the menu will go above as opposed to below. And then we can also add um, X position is before instead of after, which it is by default. Okay, so now it goes to the left as opposed to starting from the left and going to the right. Okay, another thing you can do is use nested menus. This is done the same way as the first menu worked. So the first menu 
has a button which triggers uh, a menu by name, so that triggers root menu, uh, which is this one, and then this one has a button which has a trigger which triggers submenu, which is this one. Okay, so I'll just copy this example, and it should work just out of the box on our own site. Right, so there it is, there's our button. And then when you hover over this one, it shows the submenu. Um, and yeah, so that's the submenu working. You just use um, nested map menus in the same pattern as the first menu. All right, the next thing you can do is what's called uh, lazy rendering. And what that means is by default, uh, our old map menus were loading all of the contents uh, whenever the component was loaded on the page. Um, but now with this ng template in between, this will actually lazy render the uh, what's inside of here. So whatever's inside of here won't be loaded until um, the last second. So when the user hovers over that menu um, or clicks the button, then it will be loaded. Okay, and this one will look just exactly the same as the other ones, but under the hood it's going to be doing lazy rendering. So we'll copy that, and again the only difference is this ng template, which has matte menu context in it. Everything else is the same. Alright, and as expected, this just works exactly the same as the other ones. Um, one of the reasons you might want to use lazy rendering is in order to pass data to a menu. Um, so in case you don't know the data that's going to be passed to the menu until later, you could use lazy loading to ensure that that data exists when it needs to. Okay, so in their example here, um, I'll paste it and then explain it on our own site. So basically they have their map menu with that same ng template. Um, everything else is the same except um, they're declaring a variable here, let name um, equals name. Okay, so that's making a variable name which is used here, and they're setting it equal to name. So the button which is triggering app menu actually passes some data here, name equals Sally, um, and then this menu says I'm going to grab that name, and then put it into my own variable called name, and then use it here. Alright, and then this other button is doing the same thing. So it can reuse the same menu, but it passes it different data. So this one will have name Bob, and this one will have named Sally. So on our site, this one, the first one, we click on it and it says log off Sally. And this one says log off Bob. And then the last section just mentions that you can use the arrow keys and enter uh, with the map menu, but you would kind of expect that anyways. So yeah, that's basically it for map menus, you guys. Uh, let me know if you like this video in the comments below. And be sure to subscribe for more videos like this.